issue now. So we'd, let's talk about a important topic today, pain relief is human right. I'll take you through this, this is a pictorial presentation, but yes, there's a lot of message around. Pain is as old as mankind, yes, it's still mysterious. And we are trying to fight it out for ages together. Now we have tools in hand and we can really do justice for these patients. It is becoming a burning problem of today's times because the digital world and these young kids, young boys and girls, they're getting falling prey to this problem because our evolution has been in thousands of generations. And what is happening in the last one or two generations is a tech revolution. And our evolution is not able to catch up with the tech revolution. That's why young people are getting into this trap. But it's more important to teach them, educate them, tell them where they really can avoid it and really have to correct their postures. And this is one of the important things. It has become a lifestyle disease. Under treatment of pain is a pandemic. It's a global phenomena. And but we with good pain management can really do justice for all these patients and can really put them back on track. They said it's cruel to deny people in pain to access to effective pain interventions. That's where Yashoda is. Yashoda is doing his bit now. So the chronic pain is a multi-dimensional issue. It's not just the physical pain which is there. It's a lot of functional, emotional, spiritual and social aspect. And over and above in Indian setting is the, is the financial aspect also which is important. And especially with the bed and get getting into this trap, the whole family gets into a problem. Patient needs help. We keep seeing these patients day in day out in our clinics. Look at this patient. I call it a say, it's a wrong or part of the medical fraternity. If you allow patients to burn their back for want of the help, want of pain relief, it's not great. So I think probably that's where we fail and we have to succeed there on now. So the people have been doing, they get onto the painkillers themselves, they go to the chemist shop and then they have energetic nephropathies. In Indian subsetting, we have the diabetic capital of the world. If patients taking painkiller along with the diabetes, we are adding fuel to the fire. And then you really realize, and patients many times, they're getting intelligent now. If you tell them painkiller, they say, no, good. So, and another thing is GI bleed. We have gastro people around, they know how important it is to really educate people. They don't take too much of it because the acidity and everything comes up. And another bigger problem, which is a, uh, the opiate pandemic, which is uh, in the Western world, which is uh, the painkiller, which they tend to start now, they are going away from it. And it's a less and less opioid is being used. But sometimes people go for surgeries, good. But sometimes hard luck changes. This gentleman has gone for three surgeries at different times and still in pain. Look at this list, still in pain. So that, what, what next? He's taken his last step and thereafter still in pain. So we have a provision, interventional pain management, doing good for justice for these patients who are either going for uh, advice for a surgery, we can really pull them out, or they are suffering because of the pain and you can really make them pain free. So it's, it's, that's the role of our pain specialists around. And especially younger people in this modern time, we have so many young people coming with the joint pain, MSK pain and chronic pain scenarios. It, it, is, the, it is demography changing. Uh, what is used to be 30, 40 years back is changing now very, very fast, very rapidly. Our kids and grandkids are falling prey to this. So let's pull them out and give them a pain free life. Radio frequency ablation, this is one good step to uh, make them pain free. Another is very vital which you're going to hear today, today with a good topic on this is regenerative combo therapies. We are trying to combo the pain relief along with the regeneration and repair. And we have so many molecules now available, PRP, GFC, BMAC, ACP and exosomes and micromolecules are coming up. It's a very, very rampant new science coming and very, very helpful for the patients. So people are really doing good work with these uh, molecules now, especially younger people. I'm happy. I told you, like many, many people go for knee pain. You can do a knee pain relief with the radio frequency and regeneration with your all regenerative therapies. It is taken over the steroids. Steroids are bad in long run. And without any side effect of the steroid, you can give them pain relief. And this is the rich plasma. It works from head to toe. It's not just one thing. In many athletics, many sports people are making use of this now. Celebrities also, so it is becoming into a fashion now. But yes, it is a relief. And initially people didn't believe, but you can repair things. That's something what you really want. You have your own body with you. And like in a frozen shoulder, people are, uh, you know, having a pain. Physio, anyway, you have to do all this consumer management for four weeks first. But if it doesn't give you a result, there is a solution for that. And these are the frozen shoulder people. We can do a regenerative medicine and you have a tennis elbow. And again, you can do regenerative medicine. It's just a jab, just a needle. And we use 26 gauge needle. So it doesn't really bother pain and relief is uh, near permanent, by the way. And it's, it can be repeated if need be. 
but it's a permanent solution. So here you are making your body anabolic. You know, there's no catabolic inside the body. Lower back pain has always been a puzzle, especially lately. More and more people are with younger people coming into this, and you don't know. There are so many pain generators in the lower back, be it the facet, be it the the lysis, be it the disc, be it the endogenic, and now we need to talk about the vertebrogenic pain. It is a new thing which has come. Modic changes. It can cause pain. It was not there a few years back. There is a very good treatment, BVN ablation is there, which helps these people. And but it's important to diagnose what is the target, where is the exactly pain generator and targeted, and effective interventions are there. Spine injections are taken over, all these big surgeries now. And the, who wants a knife if you can manage needles? Obviously, and that's the uh, desired uh, treatment for many, many such patients. Regenerative therapy for this disease. I told you younger people falling prey to this. If my son gets into this problem, I like to advise for regenerative therapy, then I'm going for any higher treatment modality. And that is it. And we are comboing it with the surgeries. If you're doing a spine surgery also, still we're combing with the regenerative medicine. And even many orthopedic people who friends around, they know. Uh, the regenerative medicine is doing, giving a better result when they combo with the surgeries, even if it is open surgeries or uh, endoscopic surgery for that matter. It's era of MAS, minimum years of interventions in their endoscopy is doing a good justice for these patients. Like one patient who came with a foot drop and there's a large disc piece in there and patient had a foot drop. In one go, you just put in a scope 6.5 mm, take the disc out and patient is walking back very next hour and walking back home and back to work by next week. Otherwise, if you leave them alone, these foot drop can be permanent for these people. These paralysis and all these injuries can be permanent. So you have to act proactively in emergency scenario if, it is, if that is the case. He is talking about a friend of his, he is the friend we are talking about. He, for the, for the first patient we did the uh, ultrasound, intradiscal ultrasound in the world by the way. And we can name it after him, the procedure. So that's the ultrasound work. And once we did the procedure in the post-op room and the very next hour he is walking to the loo and look at this, he is talking to his family and friends on the phone. That's a litmus test for these people. If you can give them pain relief, that's and they're back to their phones, they're glued to phones, that's wonderful uh, for these people. Yes, uh, we talk about failed back surgery, but our post surgical syndrome. This gentleman had six open surgeries and six interventions, still suffering in pain, going places from world over places, from Thailand to Egypt and whatnot places, and is not getting as a good pain relief. He came to me, and uh, obviously, we, the next best option is the spinal cord simulations. We do have the uh, spinal cord simulation, DRG, PNS and reactivate it, which is doing justice. It's like pacing the spine, like we have a pacemaker in the heart, same way we pace the spine. And, and it really takes the pain away, it, it blocks the pain pathways and that's what it is like a gate control theory, where we got the Nobel Prize. People who are having a headache, we have some provision for uh, cluster headache, we do a pseudopeltan ganglion block. But yes, it's quite often it's a trigeminal uh, ganglion which is causing a problem. And it's a simple treatment. People are taking medicine for tens of years or decades and decades. And with one good invention, they get the final relief and which is for years together. Again, a repeatable procedure, procedure if need be, but mostly it is one time is more than enough. But it's realized they come from dental clinic after half the dentures are gone. That's not coming from the dental area. It is coming from the trigeminal area. So put in a needle here, block the trigeminal nerve, pain is taken care. But then there are some such subset, subset of patients who are Orofacial cancer, India is the capital of the world orofacial cancer because of the tobacco chewing and other things, tobacco chewing and they get these kind of things. They are dying, they know it, the death is imminent, they are seeing the death but who wants to die every day? That's the whole problem. That's where you can really block the cycle of dying every day, you give them pain relief and they are back to family. That's important. I think it's the most human job you can do. And pain relief is more terrible than the death itself. And just sympathy is not enough. I've seen patients, relatives, even doctors standing by the side of the patient and just sympathizing or just looking at the patient or put them a heavy dose of narcotics or sedatives, which is not good. And they cut off before they really die. And pain, uh, you know, you, 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 you pain warriors, they can fight against pain and uh, put them to their family's back. Celiac plexus is one of the problem. Uh, treatment is there. Because if there is anything gastrointestinal cancer, which is right from the gastrointestinal junction up to the splenic flexure of the large colon, be it liver, gallbladder, or pancreas, and you can give a permanent relief for, for, this, for the years to come for these patients. And I've done for uh, uh, this, even for the chronic pancreatitis, this patient. And you put in little CT guided. We used to do fluoro earlier. And now this ultrasound is very, very big helpful for tool in these patients. And you can do in a cancer setting by the bedside. For these patients and you put in a needle, put in a drug, the pain pathway is closed, done job and patient wants to go back home 
and another thing is like any pelvic malignancies or for the matter pelvic malignancies chronic pelvic pain bladder pain syndrome or dysmenorrhea these patients when they have the problem you can do a superior hepatic reflex block you do it fluoro guided wonderful done for ages but radiation issues is there now we doing a ultrasound guided block a good ultrasound machine really makes the life very easy and simple i told you chronic pelvic pain is a problem of sometimes young ladies corporate ladies in active carriers very educated ones and they have a pain in the pelvis and they always you know think they say it's a, it's a headache in the pelvis and the problem gets bigger when the doctors they don't believe they say it's in your head if they don't believe it's in the pelvis that my euro friends are there they would understand it's a very very big problem so there's a double pain now patient has got a physical pain and you given a mental pain because he didn't believe the patient and and thereafter and and by the way patient is looking for help and patient feel helpless all the more reason to uh, you know this they suffer further on the pain is real and treatable please there is no merit in suffering and with so many treatment modalities available hypercar simplex block impar block pinna block and spinal cord simulators you cannot lose the battle if you have so many immunization with you so you give them a pain free days leftover days or pain free life thereafter so you decouple pain that's the whole point you break the cycles decouple pain and mission is accomplished you give them a easy life like a patient young boy i say a god even cruel i saw in a long time back in a cancer hospital five year old boy with a neuroblastoma you see god has given birth to take him back very soon but then you have the catheter in place it was a very big pain howling who who wants to see baby crying in pain so put in a catheter you put those baxter's flexometric pumps and you put the drugs in here and for four months together we could give him a nice good pain relief to this child well when you can't add days to life you know the point is you start adding life to days that's what it is for these terminal cancer patients please do justice for these patients and you start gifting them smiles this lady had a ca breast and later on she developed a uh, secondaries in the liver and this is uh, just a month before she actually died she is back with the family so you are really gifting something back to these people another gentleman who came very recently six level fractures multiple myeloma and then uh, he was stooping he was not even uh, walking and then almost cut off again from the life and you put them six level six level i did four a kyphoplasty two vertiplasty is a very high in procedure but very much doable if you do a good job and patient got a look at the patient look at the patient face by the way my friends look at the patient face such a smile as soon as he off the table ot table right on the trolley such a big smile well i'm so happy it's a million dollar smile i call it so there's a novel plasma therapies are come in now very very new science let's put science into action and we are doing burning the tumors away and then refilling with the cement now and the, you go to the post procedure room and patients walking what else you want for these patients you know sometime life is limiting but you want to give them quality in that limited time Os the, with the age expectancy you know we know it we, we we all are going to grow older and have osteoporosis some people have osteoporotic compression fractures coming up even with travel traumas you take have a patient fall in the gurdwara had a fracture put the patient table put the needle in cement in and it's a quick fix for these fracture spines very effective very good treatment but until unless patient realizes doctor realizes you can really you know put them back to work in a month time or two time i've seen in us and other places they do drive the car to the place get the cementing done in 3 hours go back home so that's what we have to i did a six level in long back 2010 and that was a record that time now people are uh, kind of um, just doing there after more and more of it i have devised a technique you can't do all this procedure until you have a new technology that i put a epid anti epidural safety balloon behind the vertebral cortex and i just put my cement work inside and that's a safety when you do all these high end procedures safety gets vital it's like a pilot flying the plane then you have a jet person flying the jet so you have to have a safety in mind i i just show you a patient who's got a six level cement uh, say by the way fracture spine six level screws fixation is been done but the fracture didn't unite and patient was in pain put in a needle there put the cement in there and just do a nerve block there look at the incision size the surgical incision size and what we did from that small hole and is the difference and this could have been done with the small hole itself now this is a vertebral augmentation and this lady by the way just to give you an idea that this this couple old couple many many of uh, scenario model demography modern uh, society many people are loners now kids are gone and they all alone and you they going to grow old and then going to have old age issues she had a fracture spine look at the fracture spine and the, and, and the kids can't come back they have their own life and everything so the patient is left to suffer once they have fracture spine you can't go to the washroom even so what life it is 
and it happens to the couple itself. It's not the person suffers. If the family suffers, then society suffers. It becomes our duty, pertinent duty, that what best we can do for these people to put them back on track and give them quality of life. And this is what I do with the same epidural balloon I did decimating this lady. And she, well, the patient is happy, you are happy, and they're back to back to home and uh, again back to work, back to kitchen rather for this lady. So you are, by the way, God sent. I keep telling my friends here who are sitting here, and you're given a responsibility somewhere that do your best, be your best, and deliver the best so that you can really take the pain off the society of these people who really need you most. Until as you do it, do you deliver it, they are suffering, they are suffering around. I think probably I always feel that yes, it is our duty, medical duty and social duty and over and above, I put it to myself, it's our human duty to give pain relief to such patients, if we can, if we should. And by the way, all these people are their liabilities, old people, they are, they are their assets in the families and once they get into sick units, they become liability for the family. And you turn those liability back to the assets, that's what you're trying to do and that's what this, the whole thing is all about. The vertebral augmentation is a magic band with all these orthopedic fractures coming up and I do it in burst fractures, vertebral planars, I do it in retropulse fractures here, I do it in multiple levels and I do it in the, uh, uh, the retropulsing fracture in the malignant fractures. I do it with my innovations, it is doable, please you can learn it, do it. And you have to be master in your game. Any game you play in life, you be your master and do it. Deliver it. Why not? And that's, that's it. And healing touch, you know, keep gifting smiles and happiness all around. Some people, they are asking, you know, what a pain and they were beg for death. I have had people who are asking for suicide. And there have been instances because of pain. A lady died and she said, I want my daughter to be a pain specialist. That's the scenario. Because pain is a pain is a pain. And then if you do a good work, then you have the smiles coming back. This lady had a foot drop. I did a procedure on, on her and she was all fine. I'm very happy that her foot drop totally recovered 100%. I'm so happy for her. So let's keep igniting more minds and we have to make this world pain free. Through education, through knowledge, through skills and through wisdom. And we have to do it as a pain relief is a human right. When I say pain relief is a human right, there is a second line. It is our duty to deliver that pain relief. It, 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 it bounces back on me. Okay, if patient is asking for it, I have to deliver it now. It is my responsibility. So we, we can have those smiles all around and we are not doing for ourselves. We are doing for generations to come. And we want to leave this world more pain free, more efficient and more effective. So it's a choice which patient has got. Either patient lives pain, either live pain or he leaves pain. So we always try to do our bit one way or the other, which way or the other. I wish you all learn, take some message home and please do your duty. We all together make the whole fraternity, medical fraternity is all about. So let's do our duty and thank you, thank you friends for your time. Thank you so much.